Hey everyone, this is Lesson 5.1.1, Investigating the Graphs of Quadratic Functions. So this begins our Chapter 5, um, Introduction to Quadratic Functions. Uh, technically, you've probably already seen uh, quadratic functions already, uh, but we're going to investigate them a little bit more so we become a little bit uh, more proficient uh, with them. All right, uh, so uh, the basics uh, that we've kind of already seen uh, have been the form of which the equation is written. So we've been seeing um, quadratic expressions uh, before that we've been factoring. Um, so we've been doing that a lot lately. Um, this time we're actually looking at it in terms of an equation, right? So the difference would be now it's actually equal to something. And so we're going to be looking at the graphs of these quadratic functions and what they look like and how we can describe them. So in general they looked u-shaped so you should see uh, a u-shape uh, to this graph. Uh, this is what we call a parabola. All right. So um, the equation and knowing that it's a parabola are key things to know. Uh, so our goal um, in this chapter, uh, this lesson and overall this chapter, is to be able to describe the graph uh, with enough detail, uh, give enough information, that if you give that to someone else, they can create the same graph um, based off of your description. So if I just give you all... Uh, if I don't even give you the equation, if I just give you a lot of information about the graph, uh, would you be able to graph it? All right. So ideally, uh, you want to be able to. All right. So uh, there's uh, there's a lot of information that we can focus on. For right now, I'm going to focus on these key four, uh, four things. Uh, the first one is orientation. Uh, which means really what direction is it facing. Um, and then the vertex, uh, which is either the bottom of the graph or the top of the graph, where is it located. Uh, intercepts would be either x-intercepts or y-intercepts. Uh, and then line of symmetry. Uh, what's the equation of the line that um, basically divides that parabola in half? All right, so we'll be looking at that. So uh, traditionally in this lesson, um, you would most likely be working with your uh, teams to kind of graph these and do this on your own. So obviously a little bit harder now uh, with the distance learning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, show you uh, the equation and the graph and then kind of tell you how to find all this information. So uh, as long as you have the graph, then you should be able to do the same. Right, so we'll, I think we're going to go through uh, three examples. Uh, uh, and the rest of the problems, uh, I'll let you try to do on your own. Um, if you would like to try to see if you could do this on your own, uh, try to do it. Uh, let me know if you need the answers to verify your work. All right, so I'll start talking about uh, this one. Uh, here we have the equation y equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. Um, normally, uh, the graph would not be given to you, uh, so you would have to find the graph. Uh, so you could either use an x and y table uh, and then plug in numbers. Um, that's one option to get a bunch of points that you could plot. Uh, the other option is to use a graphing calculator, right? So which is what I did. Uh, I just typed this into our Desmos graphing calculator uh, and it gives a nice graph. All right, so once we have the graph, then it's just about finding the information. So the first thing I'm looking for is orientation. So orientation is how does that U shape look? Is it facing up or is it facing down? So if it is upward, so in this case, it looks like it's going up, right? So in both directions, it's going up. It looks like a U. Um, then it's headed in the positive direction, right? If it's going up, it means it's going in the positive direction. So we 
we describe the orientation as being positive. Uh, another way of describing orientation would be how it opens. So in this case, it opens up. Okay. And so the next part is the vertex. Where is the vertex? So the nice part about parabolas is uh, they uh, always have a vertex and there's only ever one. So in this case, uh, it's either going to be at the bottom or the top. So if it happened if this parabola was upside down, then it would be at the top. In this case, we just look right at the bottom and I've already labeled it for us. So this would be our vertex. And all we need to do is figure out what that point is. So this is one in the X and it goes down to nine. All right, so uh, notice in the graph, I don't have everything labeled. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so uh, make sure uh, you know either how to count the lines. A uh, common mistake is to miscount. All right, so like sometimes people will think this is at 10 because they see the 10 here. All right, and all we're doing is copying the coordinates. Uh, so obviously I have these written down for you already, but you would have to get these on your own. Now, intercepts, uh, there's two different types of intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And so x-intercepts would be uh, the ones that occur on the x-axis. All right, so this is the x-axis. And the y-intercepts uh, would occur on, this is, oops, this is the y-axis. All right, so if we look at uh, the x-axis, and we look to see where does it intersect, where does it cross, uh, we just look to see at those points. And it looks like we have two x-intercepts. So I'm going to look at the coordinates, and this is negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. All right, so remember when uh, this is always an x, comma, y. Coordinates are always x, comma, y. So the first number tells you where you are on the x-axis, 4. And then 0 would mean it's, does, it's not going up or down. It's staying right on this line. So negative 2, 0, 4, 0. Those are x-intercepts. But there's also, you'll notice there's also, if we look at the y, y-axis, uh, you should notice that the graph also crosses at one point. So you'll notice it's just crossing at one point. This is at 0, 8. All right. So make sure you also identify the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Uh, if you did not include this, if I didn't include any of this information, then we wouldn't know which points are x-intercepts and which are y-intercepts. So make sure you include the words or notation. Either write the complete word intercept or abbreviate it like this is fine. Um, and then the last thing is line of symmetry. So symmetry, uh, this is having to do with uh, like reflection symmetry. Um, and reflection symmetry, uh, sometimes we use the word mirror. And so where can I draw a line so that it basically cuts this graph in half? All right, so I'm going to, let's see if I could put a line here. So the nice part about the line of symmetry is it always goes through the vertex. All right, so that line that goes right down the middle is our line of symmetry. And so what I need to know, it's always going to be, uh, in this case, if it's going up and down, it's going to be x equals. So I need to know what's the equation of this line. So easy part is just to see where it crosses the x-axis. So and this, in this case, uh, I notice it crosses at 1. So then I'm going to put uh, x equals 2, 1. All right, and that's it. All right. So we know the orientation. We know the vertex. We know the intercepts. So if someone was just graphing this, they would very easily be able to plot 1, 2, three, four points, 
uh, and then they would have an idea of where the line of symmetry is. So they could probably figure out maybe even five points. Five points would be enough to sketch a picture of the graph. All right, so uh, let's try this again. Uh, and we're gonna do two more. They're all gonna be a little, slightly different. On this next one, you'll notice uh, this, this one doesn't even have all three terms, right? It's, not, it's a little bit shorter, it's missing the middle term. Uh, and I notice right away it has a minus or a negative in front, right? So, um, and if you if you notice from the graph, it already looks not like a U, right? So not like the traditional smiley face, but instead more like a frown. All right. So um, I didn't fill this one in, so I'm going to do this with you. And so the first one, uh, orientation. So orientation looks like, well, it's not, even though some people say, think this is going up, but the reality is the way it ends is it's going down. It's going in the negatives, right? Because these are all negatives. So this would be an example of a negative orientation. Or you could say it opens down. All right, now we're looking for the vertex, and I said the vertex is either at the top or the bottom. So we look, since there is no low point here, uh, we're looking at the highest point. All right, so let's, uh, <coughs> let's put a point here. This is going to be the vertex, so all I need to know is uh, what's the coordinate for here. And so this is going to be 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0, 4 would be our coordinates. So I'll put this here. It's always nice to put it on the graph um, just in case uh, you make a mistake uh, writing it out. Um, so especially on a test, it's always nice to see it on both places. So uh, again, if I didn't mention it already, uh, you should be including the graphs on these notes as you're copying them down. Um, because if you don't have the graph, then all the information doesn't really mean anything. Right, so they kind of go hand in hand. Um, and so I'm going to write out the vertex is 0, 4. And x-intercepts, y-intercepts. So I'm looking at the x-axis, and it looks like it does cross in two places. So let's put... Um, I'm going to put some dots there just so I know where they're at. So this looks like um, 2 comma 0 and this one looks like negative 2 comma 0. All right, so I'm just going to write those out. So this is negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. And then the y-intercept, we're looking to see where does it cross the y-axis and it also crosses at 0, 4. So we're going to put 0, 4. All right. So you'll notice the vertex in this case and the, and the y-intercept are the same. That's perfectly fine. Um, and what else? Line of symmetry. We're looking for the line that cuts this down the middle. And so if I draw in that line, and I notice it crosses, I'm looking to see where it crosses the x-axis, and it crosses right here at 0. So uh, I'm going to put x equals to 0. And that's it for this problem. So if I give you a graph, so let's say on the test I give you a picture of this graph, or, or even just the equation, and you have to graph it, um, you should be able to tell me all this information. What's the orientation, what's the vertex, what are the y-intercepts, and what's the line of symmetry. So this would be a good example of a test question. All right, and then the third one that I wanted to go over, um, so this one looks a little bit more like the first one we did. Uh, except uh, 
the first thing I notice, I don't know if you notice it, um, is I'm looking, I always look right away, does it cross the x-axis? And I notice it doesn't even cross the x-axis. All right, so that's interesting. All right, so first thing, let's start with orientation. So how is it facing? Is this positive or is this negative? Well, it looks like it's still going up in the positive, right? It looks like it's open upward. So I'm going to put positive. And uh, the next part, uh, well, I always like to put that it opens up. Right. It's nice to always know it both ways. Uh, the vertex, we're looking to see where does it, uh, where's the bottom. In this case, looks about right here. So, uh, what's the coordinates here? So again, this is the vertex. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over 2 and up 1. All right, over 2 and up 1. So this is going to be 2, comma 1. All right, so this is going to be 2, 1 for the vertex. Uh, intercepts, we, looked, we talked about x-intercepts. I don't see any, right? It doesn't even cross the x-axis. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. So I would just put none. So there are no x-intercepts. Uh, so that's good to know, all right? So if you're telling someone it doesn't have any x-intercepts, uh, that's good information, right? It doesn't have to be a point on the graph. Letting them know there aren't any is also useful. And then let's look for y-intercepts. So then I look going up and down, and I notice it crosses right here. And so let's put a dot there. So this is our y-intercept, and this is going to be at, try not to get your x and y's mixed up. Uh, so in this case, we st always start at x's, right? Where are we in the x-axis? Well, we're at 0, all right? So I'm going to put 0. And then the next number is how far up or down it goes. In this case, we're going up to 5. So, all right, most common mistake is mixing up the two numbers. So it's not 5, 0, it's 0, 5. Uh, so I'm going to put 0, 5. All right, and then line of symmetry. Um, again, it always goes through the vertex, so I'm just going to draw in a line that goes through this one. And I'm looking to see where does it cross the x-axis, and it's going to be right here at 2. All right, so you'll notice that that's also the same two that's part of the vertex. All right, and that's it. So this is what you should be able to do. Uh, the next few lessons, we're, it's definitely gonna get a little bit more involved, uh, but for the most part, can you describe a graph to someone? So can you tell me the orientation? Can you tell me the vertex, intercepts, line of symmetry? All right, so uh, here's some more for you to practice. Uh, these are actually the one I took the first three of these, uh, those are the ones we just did. Um, so A, B, and C, we've we've already completed. Um, your challenge for you is to see if you could do any one of these. Um, pick one, do them all, uh, and let me know if you have questions or you want uh, answers to these. Um, <clears throat> uh, the graphs of these, if you don't know how to do it by hand, I would probably just recommend using a graphing calculator. Desmos graphing calculator uh, online. Just type it in uh, and it'll give you a picture of the graph. Right? All right, uh, that's it for this lesson and we'll see you next time.